Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. It is still uh, January 26th and I'm picking up right where I left off with, um, well, I think I'm done now actually with the focus law stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually, I thought I was done last time, so let's see. Oh, jeez, I just failed. Ah, that's my head exploding. <laughs> Why? Why? Okay, um, boy, I thought I had this working. That worked, right? Just kill me now. That's a figure of speech for all of you homicidal maniacs out there. Please don't. Um, I know this was working before I started mucking around with it. That's so interesting. What did I change? Oh, <laughs> uh, I deleted the focus lost event. That was um, none too bright of me. I'm sure some of you out there actually noticed that on the video and were yelling at your stream. Hey, Jim, you idiot. Well, you know, you don't need to tell me that. <laughs> um, all right, now it's working. Um, so let's see. This this is just um, hideous. Yes, that's the word, hideous. But you know, I think this is one of those situations where I'm gonna just you know smile, nod, whistle nonchalantly, and move on to something else. So it's working. This is working. Will it fail like it's supposed to? Yes, it will fail like it's supposed to. But wait, there's more. Let's go back to the scratch pad. Um, actually, first, let's, well, as always, um, oops, this is good. So let's make sure this works. Yes, it seems to be working. Okay, so thank you very much for that uh, response, Matthias, or I, however, however you pronounce your name. I apologize if I apologize if I got it wrong. But now we've got this issue, and let me explain what's going on here. So on the comments for episode seventy-nine, Alan, uh, no last name, provided, let us know that there's this problem. If you pass in, if you construct your event handler, or if you do you set up your event handler in a constructor. And here's why. Now, I don't know if this part is true, but I trust him when he says this, uh, because he was referring to um, somebody who is apparently an authority, and you know, proof by authority is good enough for me. Um, anyway, apparently, until the constructor exits, the object is in sort of a half-baked form where you do not want to refer to the object reference. If you do, bad things can happen. I don't know what kinds of bad things, but some sort of bad things can happen. So big deal, right? Um, we're not passing the, you know, we're not referring to this constructor except that, or this object, except that we are. And here's why. We are creating a new object that's a subclass, a, the one and only uh, instance of a subclass of focus adapter. And in that one and only instance of that subclass, we're overriding focus lost. And in focus lost, we are saying, we are calling set text on this class, dereferencing it before the constructor has exited. And that apparently can cause bad things to happen. What kinds of bad things? Um, I'm not clear on that, but bad things. So, um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go take a, a second look because in order to fix this, I have to move this code out. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. One is we can just override the appropriate method, and that's probably the easiest way to handle this. Um, or two, we can um, we can discover that this the issue with 
dereferencing semi-constructed objects is not as important as, as it seems. Let's, uh, so I'm going to pause the video, take a look at that, and be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. So I took a, I had a little trouble finding out, finding the reference that said why it was so bad to refer to a class that was partially constructed. And um, I actually ended up at the Java language specification and read through the detailed description of how an object is constructed. And I think I understand the rationale behind the statement that you shouldn't allow the this reference escape before the object is constructed. Um, and, you know, this is, programmers have folklore. You know, we hear things and we, they sound plausible and they sound dangerous and so we tend to magnify them. Um, and this may be one of those cases. When an object is being constructed, as, as far as I can tell from my reading of it, uh, when an object is being constructed, it is fully initialized before any of the code in the constructor is run. So at this point, there's no danger from um, allowing the this method to escape. The catch is, is that the superclass code is run before the subclass code. So if we were to subclass dollars text field and have it do something, then if this code was run before uh, asynchronously, it could be run before any subclass code was constructed. It also is going to be run before any code here is constructed is is called, but that's that's not a big deal. So the only danger, as far as I can tell, the only danger from asynchronously referring to a partially constructed object is that it is possible that the code after that escaped reference uh, might not have run yet, and that particularly means code in subclass constructors might not have run yet. Now in this case it's not a problem because we don't have any subclass constructors. So, but there is a risk that in the future we will no, we we could but I like the simplicity and elegance of doing this, so what I'm going to do is simply make this class final, which, um, if I understand correctly, means that um, you can't subclass it. And then I'll make a add a little comment. If you ever want to make to subclass this class, um, be careful of race conditions with the event handler and the constructor. Uh, it could execute before the subclass constructor. There we go. So I'm doing two things here. One, I'm documenting the issue. And two, I'm changing the code to make it impossible to write bad code so that in the future if I try to subclass this I'll get a compiler error. I'll come look over here and say why Jim, why was Jim so stupid to put final on this? And then I'll see the comment. And that's what I was talking about earlier, either in, earlier in this episode or last episode, I don't remember now, when I said that good design makes it makes the code tell you when you use it wrong. This is exactly what I was talking about. What I've done here, if I <laughs> hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, uh, there's always the risk of hubris where I'm concerned, but Hopefully what I've done here is created a situation where I understand the issue at hand about partially uh, referring to partially constructed objects. I've made it impossible for that issue to come up by putting a final in here. I've documented it so that somebody who's wondering what's going on can understand it. And I've kept the nice, clean, simple code of having the event handler in the constructor. So. Let's see if it works. <laughs> After all that, let's see if it works. So it passes. It fails. It passes again. And it does what it's supposed to. Okay, I'm going to call that one done. Thank you, Alan, for bringing that up. That was really interesting. Um, and I, I think it really emphasizes the importance of don't trust third, fourth, fifth, sixth hand uh, information. You know, don't just put crazy things in your code because of something somebody said might be an issue at some point. Um, they are probably right. Alan was absolutely right. I'm not trying to denigrate his contribution. He was absolutely right. But until I really understood what was going on, I couldn't handle it well. 
I could have just sort of, you know, done the folklore thing and not put the listener constructor here. Um, and that would have been fine, but the code would have been a little bit uglier and I wouldn't have known why, which meant that I wouldn't, probably wouldn't remember it in the future and I might have made overly complex code to, to work around an issue that's not really an issue. So, that said, <laughs> I could be wrong about whether or not it's an issue. So, uh, please, if you're reading this, um, take a look, check my work. Uh, as I said, I looked in the Java language specification section 12.5, a creation of new class instances. Um, so I'd love, love to hear what people think about that. Okay, so now, back to formatting long numbers with commas. Let me just take a double look, check here. As I said, this is ugly, but I'm not going <laughs> to really don't want to deal with it anymore, so that's done. This is good. Um, So, and that is this failing. So I think I can make this work pretty easily. Let's go ahead and bring up dollars. Um, what I want to do, I think I can go ahead and grab that number formatter. Why is this failing? Oh, this could throw an exception. Oh, it's unreachable. Okay, I think that will work. Yeah, it does. Um, and in fact, I think what I can do is ask for a get currency instance. That and just return that directly. Oh. Yeah, okay, so that's... You know what, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm just gonna do that. There's ways with number formatter to specify the number of de decimals and so forth, but this is, honestly, it's quite good enough. Um, and then, because we're using that, I happen to know from looking at it previously, another case where TDD wouldn't help me if I didn't already know this, um, I know that that number formatter is going to pay attention to localization. So uh, I want to say that two string formats in the US style, USA style, even when in different locales. So what I want to do is say, Um, set the default locale to France and then I need to make sure I set it back no matter what And then we should still see that style. And even though we're in France, but because I'm not dealing with that properly, I think we'll see one period two three four. Oh, one space two three four. Okay, so perfect. So what I just need to do here is. Um, force it to the United States locale. All right, there we go. So that's it for this episode. Um, pretty interesting one, I think. So thanks very much for watching, and uh, I plan on continuing on. So I will catch you next time.